This is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting Case 17 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of severe calcification. The patient was an elderly woman that had a severe angina with single vessel disease and a calcified CTO of the mid right coronary artery. The entire RCA was heavily calcified with the outline of the vessel being visible even before contrast injection. The occlusion was at the mid segment of the right coronary artery with the PDA reconstituting via collaterals from the septal as well as epicardial collaterals. There appeared to be potentially some septal collaterals, some epicardial collaterals, and the distal vessel was diffusely diseased. So this was a patient with a clear proximal cap, a fairly long CTO, approximately 60 millimeters, a bifurcation of the PDA and PLV at the distal cap, and then uh, unclear collaterals, uh, potentially septal or epicardial. The plan was to attempt retrograde attempt first if the septal collaterals were found to connect with the PDA, followed by undergrade dissection reentry if that failed to achieve success. We first tried to go retrograde, and unfortunately, there was n we were not able to make a connection between the LAD and the septum and the PDA. Therefore, we switched to undergrade dissection reentry, and were actually able to advance relatively easily across post catheter, past the mid RCA, all the way to the distal right coronary artery. We then had some difficulty with the cross post catheter that wanted to go straight versus taking the turn into the PDA. However, we were able to redirect it by using a pilot 200 guide, guide wire into the direction of the right posterior descending artery. We then attempted re-entry using the Stingray system. We used the double blind stick and saw, sticking up as well as sticking down. However, we were not able to achieve re-entry here. Um, we tried once again to, uh, to stick. There's multiple attempts. However, the wire does not seem to be going in the right place. And eventually, we were able to advance that pilot 200 guide wire into what appears to be a vessel. However, on second view, this is not really the vessel. So when you try to re-enter again, so we did what's called a bobsled, which is advancing the Stingray balloon to a slightly different location into the target coronary vessel. And by doing that and using a Stingray guide wire, we were then able to enter into the distal vessel as confirmed by two orthogonal project projections. We exchanged the guide wire for a workhorse guide wire, and then we placed um, a three drag diluting stents, 2.5, then a 3O by 38, and then a 3.5 by 38 millimeter, all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. However, after deployment, this is what we found. There was a perforation in the middle part of the right coronary artery with contrast coming out of the vessel. We immediately inflated a balloon to stop the extravasation. And after a few minutes of balloon inflation, the perforation looks much better. There's still some stain, but there's much less brisk bleeding into the pericardial space. We were not able to advance the cover stand because of severe calcification. However, after another 10 minutes of balloon inflation, there was no recurrent bleeding into the pericardial space, as confirmed by two orthogonal projections. And this was the CT done uh, after the procedure, showing a small pericardial effusion on the RV side with a heavily calcified uh, right coronary artery. So the patient had an uneventful recovery. We did not perform pericardiocentesis because it appeared that the blood um, effusion was actually loculated. However, it did not cause any compress compression of the right ventricle. So in summary, this is a case showing that calcification can make re-entry difficult. We had to do multiple attempts with re-entry with the Stingray system using the stick and swap technique as well as the bobsled technique. Also that heavily calcified vessels may be more prone to perforation after stent implantation as happened in this particular case. And potentially one way to avoid this is to be conservative with sizing of the stents and to also be conservative with uh, the post-dilation of the stent 
Of course, they can be challenging because sometimes those calcified lesions are the ones that require higher pressure balloon inflation for proper expansion. And finally, in cases of large vessel perforation, as in this case, sometimes prolonged balloon inflation by itself might seal the perforation, obviating the need for implanting a covered stent, which actually could not be delivered in this particular case. Thank you.